Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm your host, Jeremy. First, I want to start off by thanking the Waterloo Area Historical Society for giving us a great location to bring you more content today. And today, what I'm bringing you is a recipe out of the Kentucky Housewife. This is one of my favorite period cookbooks. It's filled with so many simple and delicious home cooking type recipes. So in the Kentucky Housewife, she talks about a way to eat pineapple fresh. So we got here a pineapple. So let's get started by cutting up this pineapple. Now when we're cutting up the pineapple, what we ultimately need to end up with are rings. So it's going to take a little bit of knife work to figure out how to make sure we get some nice thick rings to be able to put this sugar on. So the first thing that I like to do when I work with pineapple is to cut off the top and the bottom. And we'll just set that aside. And actually in the Kentucky Housewife, she writes quite often several different recipes that involve pineapple, um, some different cakes and items. Uh, this is one of the more simpler ones, but a very easy and refreshing snack to put together at that living history or family barbecue. So now that we got the top and the bottom, I need to cut off all of this outside if you haven't worked with pineapple before. And we're just going to shave this down. And I try not to take off too much, but if you've worked with pineapple before, you can realize that if you don't get enough of it off, it's very woody and you get some of these little brown bits in there and those actually are not enjoyable to eat. I'm going to want to get that just a little deeper to get some of that brown off. Pineapple is actually one of my personal favorite fruits, so it's another reason why I really enjoyed reading this simple recipe and wanting to bring it to you. All right, so now that we have this pretty well trimmed up, I want those rings. So I've been thinking about how to best accomplish that and practiced it. And I'm gonna cut this in half. And then I'm gonna use a paring knife because we need to cut out the center of this core because that's another really woody bit that you don't want to consume. So I'm gonna use a paring knife here and kind of cut out the middle. All right, now I'm pretty well through. I'm going to leave that in there as structure for when I slice this up. I'm going to do the same to the other side. All right, so I got that core just about ready to be popped out of there. All right, so now I got this core, I think, pretty well cut up. Uh, I'm leaving it in there for some structure because it says to actually cut these into thick slices. So, and I want to make sure not to collapse the slices. So that's why I'm leaving the core in there. So I'm going to cut these up into some pretty thick, stout slices. Maybe about half an inch or so. I found if I do cut them too thin, that they actually do need to be pretty thick, um, or they just don't seem to hold up real well. Like actually, this one's probably on the thinner side. So now that we got everything sliced up in those thick slices, like it's talked about in the Kentucky Housewife, we're going to put arrange them on a plate and popping those cores out. But in between each slice, she actually says to put in some sugar. Now, 1848 actually talks about using a powdered loaf sugar. So what we have available right now to us is some more or less refined brown sugar. That's what we have in the homestead. That's what we're using today. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this and just sprinkle it on. And then we're just going to alternate slice and then a little sugar. And we're just going to stack this up real pretty on the plate. And actually I'm looking forward to seeing how I personally enjoy brown sugar. And it's curious to see, having done this with more expensive and harder to get at this point, white sugar, I'm really curious to see how this is going to taste. Perhaps not as quite nice as for a fancy table as the white powdered sugar, but I think this is going to taste very nice and be very refreshing as well on any warm day. 
I'm going to leave one slice off. Just out of curiosity, I want to compare it after this sits. Once we get it all stacked up with the sugar in between each layer, Tucky Housewife says to then cover it with a towel and let it sit for one to two hours. So during that time, we're going to go work on some other things around the home. Let this sit so we can serve it in a little while, and we'll see you back soon. All right, I'm back. We've waited the hour for our pineapple to sit, and it is now time to give it a taste. I'm going to pull a slice right off the top here, and I can really see that sugar is created almost like a nice little syrup mixing with the pineapple juice. So just as a comparison, I'm going to take a little bite of just the plain pineapple. which is juicy and delicious. Now let's grab the sugared pineapple, made to eat fresh, as it says in the Kentucky Housewife. Mm. You know, not only does it add the sweetness, it actually really cut down on that, maybe that citrus bite that's in the pineapple, that acid, that acidity. Um, it's actually really, really good. Um, the sweetness isn't too much. I'm going to enjoy some more of this. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And you give this a try at Next Living History on those hot summer days. You have a refreshing snack or even a dessert after a meal or maybe just outside with the family. This is a great way to connect with history using a recipe right out of the Kentucky Housewife that we modified a bit today based on what we had available in this homestead. I'm Jeremy and thank you for watching the Civil War Digital Digest. Please like and share this episode and thank you to all of our patrons. Thank you.